Well, I reckon we should disassemble it before we clean it, huh? Let's go ahead and do that now. Hey guys, Octane Restorations here, and we are back with a 1988 through 2000 Honda GL1500 Goldwing tutorial. Ooh, a lot of words. So, I did make a video on removing the carburetor. You know, the full step, the full process. So, if you haven't seen that, go check that one out. This tutorial is going to be a complete disassembly of the carburetor. I'm going to slow it down, I'm going to show you some of the tools I use and stuff like that. We're not going to do any cleaning, anything like that. That's going to be for next video. But this video should be about 15 minutes long and it'll be a full disassembly and I'll show you the whole process. So, let's get into the tools. First up is a vacuum hose and fuel line remover tool. 10 bucks on Amazon. It is a lifesaver. Makes it so easy pulling apart hoses. Next, we got a socket set. If you have a normal socket set that has a 10 millimeter, don't worry about this. I just threw one in there in case anyone didn't have one. This is probably about the cheapest socket set you can find, but it is of lower quality. I have quite a few cheap screwdriver sets just because I can grind them to what I need. Like to fit inside the hole to remove some of the jets, it's got to be pretty narrow. And I just like getting these cheap screwdrivers and you can grind them to fit your needs. So, just a cheap screwdriver set I recommend. Next, we got some JIS screwdrivers. These are different than Phillips, but I harped on these last video, go check it out. And then we got some assorted long needle nose pliers. I think I use them just to get hose clamps off in this video. And lastly, we have a hook and pick set from Harbor Freight to get gaskets and stuff like that off. This is actually a really cheap tool set of tools and it helps pretty tremendously so get all your tools up i like to have a tubware container that i can put rubber gaskets and stuff like that in and i also like to have a few different boxes as you can see this carburetor is very dirty and it is definitely in need of a cleaning everywhere you see a hose there's going to be a hose clamp or there should be <laughs> so that's where <laughs> that's where the pliers come in Big emphasis on the should be. If you're getting this motorcycle second hand, there's a good chance none of these will be there. <laughs> and this is for a motorcycle that's been left stock. So if your motorcycle has been taken apart and redone, <laughs> hopefully this still helps you. But as you can see, there's a lot of hoses there. The goal of this disassembly is to remove everything that cannot soak in gasoline. So we're gonna get all the rubber diaphragms, rubber gaskets, everything like that apart from the metal. Let's go do that now. You got four screws up top. Use a JIS screwdriver so that it grabs. A Phillips head might strip them out. I'm gonna make a whole video on those. On the bottom, there's four more screws as well. Be sure to keep them sorted. Right now I'm just re removing the boot that stayed on. Gonna go get some WD-40 to help aid us in loosening it. If you have one of those plastic containers that you know normally have the different assortment of screws or whatever that have like the 15, 20 different compartments, what I like to do is label them like one through 20 or whatever. And then as I take off a screw, I put it in the first slot, second slot, third slot, and as long as you do it in the right order, you know, you just use them from 20 to 19 to 18, just a complete reverse. But here, this one's generally pretty easy and I've done, I don't know, this is probably my fourth or fifth GL1500 carburetor disassembly. So I'm semi confident in my ability to find out where they go. And plus I'm videoing myself. I would recommend you do the same if this is your first time video yourself to get an idea of where everything goes and that you don't lose stuff. There's a JIS screw in between both the carburetors that is way back there. It holds a linkage together that keeps the plate on and keeps the two carburetors connected. Also took off the Phillips kind of holding the accelerator pump together. These fuel lines are connected to both carburetors, so you're gonna have to get the hose clamp off and remove them. Try not to rip these. If your bike's old and they look like they're cracked, go ahead and replace them anyways. Mm. 
but there's definitely a lot of hoses, a lot of connections. This is where the socket set comes in. I believe it's a 10 millimeter. Man, some of these hoses add like structural stability. <laughs> so, again, this is where those pliers come in. Pop, they just pop it right off. I love those things. 10 bucks on Amazon. It's one of the best purchases I've ever bought. Use them on all fuel lines. All fuel lines, all vacuum lines. And I haven't had them break yet, so. There's quite a few linkages to remove. Right now I'm putting a Sharpie on one of those hoses. Later you'll see me do zip ties. This is a bracket that holds the choke cable. So I was just reinstalling that. Wasn't reinstalling it tight or anything. Just reinstalling it so I don't lose it. So at this point, you should have the carburetors pretty much removed. There's a little bracket right here holding those two lines right there so you can either remove it or you can open it bend it and see I put the screw back right there I'd recommend you do the same a little slotted head screwdriver a flat blade they're actually pretty decent prying tools but don't pry up against anything that can't support it or poke a hole in it <laughs> ask me how I know So we got the carbs separated, so now it's time for the individual disassembly. Again, I would take a whole video of your carburetors before. This is an accelerator pump, and it's got a little diaphragm in it too that we're going to disassemble. right there and you don't want that soaking in gasoline they can just cause it to swell and stuff like that not fit right so these should be eight millimeters I believe eight millimeters maybe seven millimeters but Honda did us a, a service by being able to get a socket on there instead of just a JIS screw so you don't strip it out <laughs> anytime I can use a socket I'm gonna use a socket instead of a JIS slash Phillips Once you get down underneath the float bowl, I take the gaskets out, replace them at this point if you have new ones. There's really no reason to completely disassemble all the jets and everything in the carburetor if you're just going to be soaking it in gasoline. I will take out the jets and clean them, like with wire and carb cleaner, but for the soaking process you don't really have to take them out. Right here I'm putting in the screws that I used like in the base plate and then the ones on the bottom of the carburetor that had the lines that come from the radiator. It's easier if you do it as you go and not do it at the very end like I did. <laughs> Otherwise you might have one screw that you're trying to find where it goes like I am right now. <laughs> but we get it. We find it. Replace your screws as you go. So I just want to show y'all the float bowl real quick. This is what it looks like. It's in decently rough shape. It's not the worst one I've ever seen. But everything in here is meant to touch gasoline. So you really don't have to assemble this just for the soaking process. But I'm going to go ahead and disassemble it since I'm going to clean it with carb cleaner and stuff like that anyways. 
And I would highly recommend that you always take the jets out and clean them. Because soaking a carburetor can only help so much. But the jets are actually what deliver fuel to the engine. And they have tons of tiny little holes that love to get clogged up. So 99% of the time if you're having carburetor issues with the engine not getting fuel, it's due to the jets being clogged. Some motorcycles have more jets than others. But I just, if I'm going to take apart the carburetor, I'm going to remove the jets and thoroughly clean them with carb cleaner and a piece of wire. And I'll show you how to do all that later. Just remove the diaphragm housing. There's a little socket in there. Got to remove. There's a spring and that diaphragm. You shouldn't have to replace these diaphragms unless yours is torn or ripped or anything like that or if it has holes in it. But just give them a very thorough inspection, make sure they're good. But you want to take these out because the gasoline will hurt these. But the springs, the housing, everything else, all that's fine to soak. Take out the flow bowl gaskets. Again, take out a few of the jets. I leave the idle cable adjustment, the idle screw adjustment cable. I leave that in. It's not gonna hurt it, it's just a cable. No point to completely remove it and mess up your set idle speed, so just leave that. Again, putting all the screws back in so I don't lose them. Another thing, keep everything separate. So your vacuum chamber, cap, everything like that, your jets, I would get a box, label them, and keep them separate. Some of them, some of the stuff won't fit. Some bikes, if it's at a different altitude, you know it might have different jets. I didn't show it here, but if this is your first time, I'd keep everything separate, okay? Also, one thing to mention, the needle jet, it is pressed into the carburetor body. So, <laughs> probably shouldn't try to remove that one. Just because it's pressed and it's not made for removal. And I would not mess with your pilot screws. So, I just get them in there. And again, whenever you remove them, remove the pieces, take them apart. If you're not familiar with this, keep it separate. So say like, hey, this one's the right carburetor, this one's the left carburetor. And just put your parts from the left carburetor in the left carburetor bin and the right carburetor in the right car carburetor bin. Jets, everything, the whole nine yards. So if you're not familiar, just a little tip. I would, I would highly recommend doing that. Didn't show it here because, you know, this is like my fifth, fifth time doing it. Getting fairly confident, which will probably come and bite me in the butt one day. <laughs> but right here, I'm just stacking everything in here once I removed all the rubber. And this is where we're going to soak it in the old gasoline. New gasoline works fine. It just puts off more vapors. And old gasoline works well as a solvent. It'll just dissolve all that dirt, grease, and grime like I was talking about earlier. And we had already pulled it out from the motorcycle's fuel tank already because it had been sitting a while. So instead of throwing all this old gasoline away, you can use it as a makeshift parts washer. But first, we're going to soak it in here for 24 hours, get rid of all that dirt, grease, and grime. It's just going to soak in there, start cutting on it, and make it easy for us to clean in the next episode. So stay tuned for that. Well guys, this is Octane Restorations with another 1988 through 2000 Goldwing GL1500, preferably Honda, tutorial. If it helps you, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. Uh, and leave a comment. Let me know if something you want to see more, something you have a question about, something you want to see different. Again, I'm not perfect, so if you have a critique or anything, just let me know. This is Octane Restorations. You have a good rest of your day.